I'm here with a 2021 BMW X5 xDrive 45e, BMW's plug-in hybrid version of their very popular X5 mid-size SUVs. How popular are they? Well, in 2020, which was a down year, they sold more than 50,000 X5s in the US. So BMW has an opportunity to sell a lot of these if it's a good value and if it's a good plug-in hybrid. We're gonna hop in it now, take it for a ride. We'll let you know just how good a plug-in hybrid this vehicle is. The 2021 X5 xDrive 45e has a 24 kilowatt hour battery. Now that's up from 9.1 kilowatt hour battery that was in the previous version that was available a few years ago. Now that version was rated at only 14 miles per charge. With the larger battery, this new X5 xDrive 45e is EPA rated at 31 miles per charge, more than double. And I'm impressed with the range because it's in the dead of winter here in northern New Jersey, and I've been able to average about 30 miles of range per charge. And that's in temperatures that are like mid 20s to the low 30s. So it's cold. I'm certain that in warmer weather, I'll be able to get probably somewhere between 38 and 42 miles of range per charge. So listen, BMW certainly didn't disappoint with the range, especially when you compare it to what the previous version had to offer. It really wasn't that electric, the, the, the first generation X5 plug-in hybrid. Um, one thing I will tell you that I'm a little disappointed in though is BMW stuck with a 3.7 kilowatt onboard charger. Uh, so, you know, the disappointing reason is because now this has a 24 kilowatt hour battery. The previous version had only a, the, the, the small 14 kilowatt hour battery. So, oh no, I'm sorry, 9.1 kilowatt hour battery. It was 14 miles of range. So it didn't matter if it had slow charging. 24 kilowatt hour battery is a big battery. It's bigger than the battery that the initial i3 had when it came out in 2014. So, you know, and that had a 7.2 kilowatt hour onboard charger. So, you know, it's, it's kind of, as the battery size increases, you need faster charging. And BMW is sticking with the charger that they use for all their plug-in hybrids, the 3.7 kilowatt charger. Now, it's not like they don't have one. They have a 7.7 kilowatt onboard charger in their parts bin. They use it for the current i3. So they could have put it in here. And this is a premium vehicle. This is not an inexpensive vehicle. It starts at $65,400. So, you know, for whatever it costs for that extra charging, it definitely would make the vehicle a little bit more premium. Now, you know, I found myself wanting to charge faster during the day on days that I went out and drove it for a while and then came home, plugged it in for a little bit. I noticed after a couple hours, it really doesn't return that much charge, even on a, a 240 volt level two source. Uh, if you're using the occasional use charger that BMW gives you with the vehicle, that's only 120 volts. That'll take almost 24 hours to completely recharge this vehicle. So, you know, you definitely need a level two source if you wanna get the most out of the electric range of this vehicle. And, you know, I would really suggest, uh, you know, to BMW that because of the battery size, they up that to a, a little bit more of a robust onboard charger, in, in my opinion. Uh, using the charger the way it is, it takes about seven hours to fully recharge the vehicle, which is fine for overnight. But as I said, I found myself using the car for a few hours, depleting the range, coming home, plugging it in, then needing to go back out a couple hours later, and it was only like 20 or 30% charged. I would definitely have appreciated the quicker charger. If this had a 7.7 .7 kilowatt charger, say like the one they have in the i3, it would be fully recharged in three or four hours. You could go out, drive the thing 30 miles in the morning, come home, plug it in for a few hours, and then when you're going out later in the afternoon or at the night, uh, drive it another 30 miles and never use a drop of gas in the day. You could you could put 60 miles of, of uh, all electric range on the car. So, you know, I, I think that it would be a lot 
better of an electric vehicle if it had a little bit more robust onboard charging. But I do understand uh, why BMW limits their plug-in hybrids because they say, well, it's got the gas to fall back on. It doesn't need to charge quicker. No, it doesn't need to charge quicker, but it's a premium vehicle. Everything else in here is extreme premium. The charging should be premium also. So while we're talking about the battery and charging, another thing I would like to bring up that I found interesting, as I mentioned, uh, it has a 24 kilowatt hour battery. That's the total capacity. In Europe, BMW allows 21.6 kilowatt hours to be usable. That's what you get to actually drive on. They, with all electric cars, you don't get to use the full battery. They always reserve a buffer just to keep the battery in good condition. It's not good to fully charge or discharge uh, an electric vehicle battery. So in Europe, they give them 21.6 out of the 24 kilowatt hour to use. But here in the US, BMW only opened up 17.06 kilowatt hour. Kind of weird. <laughs> Almost three less kilowatt hour we get here than what they get in Europe. What the heck, BMW? <laughs> Why? Why'd you do that? <laughs> um, and I, I was a little, you know, that's what I read, and I so I checked it, and I charged last night. I de depleted the battery down to zero. Charged it last night on my charge point home flex, and that gives readouts with um, the battery, the amount of energy given to the car. And sure enough, the car only took in 18.55 kilowatt hour. Now, yes, that's slightly more than the 17.06 that's usable, but the rest is just due to charging losses. You never get 100% of what the EVSC deploys to the car. Uh, there's always a little bit of charging losses there. So yeah, for whatever reason, uh, BMW gives us less of the battery here in the US than they give our European counterparts. The X5 xDrive 45e has a 389 horsepower powertrain. That combines a three liter turbocharged six cylinder engine with an electric motor. It's good enough to propel this two and a half ton SUV <laughs> from zero to 60 in 5.3 seconds. Um, and but that's in hybrid mode with both the gas engine and the electric motor assisting in fully electric mode is a little different situation uh, it only has a hundred and thirteen horsepower motor electric motor so when it's in electric only mode it's substantially slower now um, it's good enough to get you around town. It's good enough when you step on the accelerator, you do get a, a burst forward of acceleration, but it quickly flattens out. So it's, it's it kind of like BMW tuned it so that if you really need the power, you step on it and it does lunge forward, but then it really flattens out. If you need more power, you have to push past like an artificial wall in the accelerator pedal. When, you, when you're in all electric mode, uh, you push the pedal down, you can feel it only lets you go a certain distance and um, it's not fully depressed. If you need more power, you push past that distance. It's not that hard, but you definitely can feel it when you hit it. But you push past that, the gas engine kicks on, you've got the full power and it takes off. Um, it does it rather smoothly. You really don't hear the engine that much. Matter of fact, talking about sound, this is one of the quietest cabins of any uh, vehicle that I've been in. Uh, it's, it's quieter in here than my Tesla Model 3, a lot quieter. Uh, and that's fully electric vehicle. Uh, you, the BMW does a really good job, especially in their more expensive vehicles with uh, the sound deadening. The inside of this cabin is just a, a, a quiet, serene place where you can put the music on. It doesn't have to be loud. Uh, and this has the optional Harman Kardon sound system, which is fantastic. Um, but you really get to enjoy it because you're completely isolated from the sounds outside the vehicle. Uh, I, I would love if this was fully electric to hear just how quiet um, it would be. And hopefully uh, BMW did that on the iX3 fully electric uh, SUV that's uh, out. Oh, unfortunately, we're not getting that here in the US uh, and future uh, electric vehicles, which I'm, I'm sure they will. They do a really good job deadening the sounds. Um, but getting back to the accelerator, so once you push past that soft limit, the gas engine kicks on. Now it's not hard to stay in all electric mode because that soft limit is definitely 
uh, noticeable. When you depress the accelerator, it stops you at a certain point and you really have to keep pushing to get past it. BMW uses this system on, on the, all their plug-in hybrids. Uh, I had an opportunity to drive the, the X3 plug-in hybrid a little while back and it has the same type of a, 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 a soft limit and it works really well in my opinion. It keeps you in all electric mode. Uh, if you don't want to exit all electric mode, you won't. Uh, because it's easy. You don't have to play with the accelerator like some electric vehicles do. And also, this will stay in all electric mode up to, I think it was 84 or 85 miles an hour. And uh, I actually, um, for purpose of testing, of course, uh, was out on the highway and took it up to 80 miles an hour and it stayed in all electric mode. So uh, I believe the, the 84, 85 mile an hour limit that they uh, uh, announce in the um, specifications is correct. As for regenerative braking, the lift off regenerative braking isn't configurable. It's at one setting and that's it. Now it might change a little when you go in different driving modes like Eco Pro or Sport Mode for instance. It's possible it adjusts a little. I really couldn't tell the difference. Didn't feel any different. Uh, but one thing I will say is that uh, while the lift off regeneration isn't strong, BMW has a very good blended braking system. And that means that when you depress the friction brake pedal, the friction brakes don't automatically activate. Uh, for the first percentage of your pedal travel, what BMW does is dial up the regenerative braking. Now, they're not the only electric vehicle company to do this, um, but I really like how BMW implements. I also thought that Porsche's implementation on the Taycan was really good too. Uh, but what you'd get with BMW is, and you can see there's a, there's a gauge and it shows you how much regen the car is taking in. Um, when you depress the friction brake pedal, it goes down significantly. So it, it's, it's pulling in a lot more energy and you can actually drive this even though you're using the friction brake pedal without using the actual friction brakes. The friction brakes only really seem to get used in almost like a panic stop situation when you're really pressing the, the brake pedal hard, you need to decelerate really abruptly, that's when you can feel the, the friction brakes um, grab. But in for normal driving, when you're just slowing down, you're actually doing it all with regeneration, um, which uh, definitely helps because you can see the, the charge meter here does go up as you're driving the vehicle. It, 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 the regeneration is adding uh, the energy back into the battery pack and you could start out with no charge and you look, uh, you know, after 15, 20 minutes of driving and it says you have three or four miles of electric range in the battery pack. So the regeneration system actually works really well here in my opinion. Now the one thing I will complain a little bit about is you can't turn off automatic creep on the car. Well, let me correct myself. You, there's no setting that turns off automatic creep. So the automatic creep is always activated, but there is a auto hold button that you can depress. So when that's depressed, the car, when you um, come to a stop with the brakes, it will hold. Even if you release the brake pedal, it won't creep forward. Um, so that is in a way, uh, 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 basically the same thing as disabling uh, automatic creep. So. Uh, it actually does work really well. I, 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 uh, I've been using it the whole time. And the one thing that I also like about it is it remains activated. If I come in the car and I turn it on, auto hold will be on the next time I get in the vehicle. So the car remembers that, hey, um, this person prefers auto hold. It doesn't reset. I hate that with some vehicles when you have to keep going back into your settings and resetting them the way you like to drive your car. They don't allow you to configure it and hold. With uh, the X5 xDrive 45E, if you want the car to auto hold, you press a button on the center console and it remembers that the next time you're in the car. When you drop it into sport mode, the gasoline engine automatically turns on, the suspension tightens, and the steering gets more direct. It prepares for spirited driving like this S-turn that I'm in right now. The car is a capable performer and it definitely can corner better than most SUVs. But you do feel the two and a half ton weight even with this M Sport package that this has. And there is body roll when you really push it in the turns. Um, you know, 
if you want the top performer of the X5, you need to go with the X5M. It's only about $40,000 more than this vehicle, but you do get 600 horsepower and the M suspension all the way around. I think most people are gonna find that this is more than adequate a performer. Uh, zero to 60 in you know, 5.3 seconds. It, it handles fine. It takes the turns really well. I think very few people are gonna complain about the extra weight when you're really pushing it in the corners. And like I said, if they do, then they probably should have picked a different vehicle. The X5 xDrive 45E comes equipped with a full suite of advanced driver assistance systems, including adaptive cruise control, cross traffic alert, uh, reversing assistant, blind spot notification, even has the 360 degree surround camera that's really um, useful when you're backing up or getting it or pulling into a tight space. You can see around the whole vehicle. Uh, it also has the optional gesture, con uh, gesture control for the infotainment system. Um, this vehicle isn't equipped with that, but you can get it optional and that you can basically uh, lower the radio, change channels on the radio just with gestures here. Actually had that on the X3 plug-in hybrid I tested last year and I found it pretty intuitive and I liked it. I don't know if I'd spend the extra money to get it on the vehicle, but if I had a vehicle that it was equipped on, I probably would use it more often than I thought I would when I first got it. Interior is extremely lavish, roomy, and the seats are very comfortable. The center console looked magnificent, in my opinion, with a crystal <laughs> shifter. Um, the seats are air conditioned and heated and have their controls on the side, as you would expect. Um, very open, airy feeling on the inside. Um, the driver's compartment lets you know you're in control. The steering wheel has a really good feel to it. There's a huge panoramic glass that lets a lot of light into the cabin. Uh, with a fully uh, automatic retractable sunshade if you want to keep it closed. The rear seating, plenty of room back there. You have your own controls for your, uh, your heating and cooling, and there are USB-C ports for the rear passengers. Uh, very comfortable in the back. Now, the center console has all of your controls for your uh, driving mode, sport, hybrid, electric electric, adaptive, uh, and you also have your auto hold button, which is what I spoke with before to defeat the artificial creep. Now the X5 xDrive 45E has a great air suspension with five different settings. And I was actually surprised at how much it raised and lowered. There's quite a bit of travel there for the different driving conditions that you might encounter. Works really well. Uh, there's also a battery control button that allows you to set a minimum amount of charge that the battery will hold at in case you want to use it later. Uh, the 12.3 inch touchscreen uh, center console, bright and beautiful. It uh, hosts uh, BMW's latest iDrive system. It allows you to set controls like a, a, one thing I thought was really interesting, you could set your heated seats and heated steering wheel to come on at different temperatures. So they'll automatically come on. And the heated seats, when you turn them on, they're actually heat, there's heated armrests. Uh, and uh, I thought that was really good. The car has Apple CarPlay and it also added Android Auto, something BMW didn't used to have. Uh, in the settings area, you can also change different driving modes. You actually get to personalize the settings of sport, electric, or battery control. Battery control, I talked to you before about setting the level. You can set the minimum uh, state of charge and it, the battery will maintain that. You could basically hold your battery for later if you're in a low emission zone that you're gonna be driving in, or if you just wanna be in all electric mode later in your drive. As you might expect, the X5 has a lot of cargo space. And there's a second stage back here to lower the uh, lower part of the hatch. Automatic, of course. You can even press this button on the side here and it will use the active air suspension to lower the vehicle uh, to make it easier to load stuff. All, but also, you can get it low enough where you can sit back here if you're at a tailgating or something like that and uh, it's more comfortable seating position. 
Now to lower the seats to open up this cargo area even more, you use these two poles on the side. They're not power, they're spring loaded, um, but they do fold forward. Now obviously this one didn't fold all the way forward because then I had the passenger seat way back for filming, but it normally it would fold down as far as the one on the driver's side did. Uh, there's also a small compartment under here where um, you keep your charging cable, you have some uh, tow hook uh, equipment and things like that. Notice it has a hydraulic lift on there to make it easier for you like this would be hard without that, but uh, hey, this is a BMW's premium. This also power operated to raise and of course to lower. The 2021 BMW X5 xDrive 45e has a starting MSRP of $65,400. Now that's $3,800 more than the gasoline version, which is the X540i. However, this qualifies for the full federal tax credit of $7,500. Now, not everybody qualifies for that, so you want to check with your account. But most people that are interested in buying one of these probably would be able to qualify for that. There's also additional state incentives that might make it even a better buy. So just with the federal tax credit alone, this vehicle nets out at about $3,800 less than the X540i. More vehicle, less price, better fuel economy. We think it makes a lot of sense. BMW managed to make this vehicle a better performer and have more than double the all electric range than its predecessor. And they did that without raising the price significantly. We think the 2021 BMW X5 xDrive 45e is a winner. It's not gonna do it for everyone. People that really want fully electric vehicles are not gonna be interested in this, but we think a good portion of the population that maybe isn't ready for a fully electric vehicle might like this. Actually, we think they definitely will like this. It's gonna give them best of both worlds and maybe introduce them to plugging in their cars, possibly setting them up for a fully electric vehicle with their next purchase.